I would tell you these things if I were your father. What African American youth should understand about themselves, their past, and their future by Almas Jamil Sami. This book is dedicated to my offspring, Sophie, Almas, and Jamila. Thinking Thoughts I am Almas Jamil Sami. My purpose here is to give you some thoughts about life that will complement the thoughts that you already have. What you now think will make more sense to you once you have properly digested the words I'm now giving you. I'm giving you a light that will illuminate your world as you go about the business of creating your existence on this earth. It wasn't that long ago that your ancestors were enslaved in the United States as well as in other parts of this globe. Most of us do not have the stomach to talk about slavery. It was such a bitter and painful time in our history that we can't bear to even discuss it. If it is hard for us to even discuss slavery, just think for a moment how difficult it must have been for our ancestors to have lived it. But hang in there with me, and I'll show you how it matters today and how you may benefit from the glory and the honor of your people yesterday and today, even during slavery. It has been stated that knowledge is power and truth will set you free. But let us think about that one for a moment. Knowledge is always beneficial, provided you know how to utilize and transform that knowledge into understanding. It is the understanding of the truth that will give you true power and truly set you free. If you flipped on a light switch, light bulb would come on and light up the room. That is a truth. However, understanding comes and having the knowledge of all of the scientific principles of electricity, currents, eons, protons, and electrons, and so forth. You must also have knowledge of plastic so that you will understand how the light switch was molded. It is the understanding of this knowledge that will set you free and that you will be able to walk into any building and bring light into those rooms. Likewise, I will attempt to bring light to you with the words and pictures that I helped to create in your mind. You will then be able to see better as you will move about this life. So hold my hand as I show you the way to the light switch. As I turn on the lights, you are sure to see some things that will alarm you and cause you discomfort. It is the reason our people have chosen to sit in the comfort of the darkness and fumble for what is within arm's reach, groping around in the ignorance of the dimness. It is safe that way. I will break it down, so much so that by the time I finish, you'll be able to easily open your eyes and move on to help those of your generation to further open their eyes. Soon we will all see. So let you and I come to a true understanding about our past starting with this period when we were enslaved. Your fear will subside or fall away from your mind, and you will then be equipped to lead your generation as well as future generations to come. I say enslaved instead of slaves because the word slave does not really tell the story of our people. I once heard the great historian Renoko Rashid explain that we were much, much more than slaves. In Africa, we were mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, uncles and aunts, fishermen, clerks, cooks, kings, queens, field hands, preachers, doctors, council men and women. We were humans, the first humans to walk this earth. We were the first human beings who cultivated civilizations on this earth and in the land that is now called Africa, or as some of us label the motherland, Patrusi or al land, and probably a thousand other names that Africa used to be. Do not ever let anyone tell you that you came from slaves. Enslavement only tells a mere fraction of our story. It is a part of our story that left us fractured and disjointed. All humans have a portion of their history that is unflattering or embarrassing to them. Although we should not feel embarrassed by what happened 500 years ago, we must recognize the fact that we are ashamed of our past because we are not familiar with all of it. A lot happened before slavery. It is unfortunate because the last 500 years is such a small part of who we are. It is this tragic affair that left us psychologically scarred until this day. The reason it is so dreadful to us is because our period of tragedy is how we now identify ourselves. We see ourselves through the eyes of the enslaved. If you saw a woman with a limp, would you assume that the event that caused the limp is the beginning and end of her whole life? Well, of course not. You would know that there was probably much, much more to her than a leg that causes her to limp. You would ignore that limp even more if that woman were your mother or your grandmother. You would know what she means to you personally. You would know that she had nurtured your every need. You would love her and welcome the love that she has for you. To everyone who did not know her, your whole world. Unless, of course, you did not know that she was your mama. Mother Africa at the present has a limp, but because you don't know that she is your mother, you are ashamed to stand next to her. You do 
do not know that she has that limp because she has given birth to and has since packed the whole world on her back. Think about this. Everything came from her. All language had its home in Mother Africa. All science has Mother Africa as its birthplace. Just about all human endeavor or action was born in Mother Africa. Crime, hate, immorality, love, order, compassion, commerce, slavery, clothes, hairstyling, makeup, democracy, communism, marriage, prostitution, houses, streets, churches, animals, cultivation of plants, all were invention of the children and the children of the children of Mother Africa. So she has a limp. You see her face every time you look in the mirror, yet she shames you. Let me explain her limp and the source of your shame.